Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming back. I just want to introduce uh, Eddie Han to Instagram Marketers, US Lab War. Um, we've been working with them over the past year, I think. Uh, we're, we're, we're very excited about what they've been doing. And uh, business members have been out here at, at Ground Zero. We would not be to be doing actions with them. And um, we're very excited about what they're doing at their team campus at the, at the University of Washington. And also some, uh, and what they've done at Bowling. So they've had some wonderful successes at the, with their Bowling campaign. And uh, we are also looking forward to hearing about canceled impact activities. So it's very impressive. So this is Eddie. Yeah, hi. That was a, a wonderful introduction. You took like half my talking points. Um, yeah, so I, again, I'm Eddie. Um, I'm with Resist US Led War Seattle, which is a chapter of a larger coalition, the National Coalition Resist US Led War, uh, which Ground Zero is also a part of. Um, and yeah, I mean, we, we operate on and primarily on the University of Washington campus. Um, the main campaign that we've been working on is having the University of Washington cut ties with Boeing, um, which as you may or may not know is the world's third largest weapons manufacturer. Um, and so I'm just here today to, to connect with you all and give you a little update on like what uh, us at Resist US Led War Seattle have been up to for the last five months. Um, many things which you all or some of you all have uh, plugged into and joined in on um, and to kind of prop up some of the stuff that we have coming up. Uh, so first of all, I, we, we were there. Uh, five months ago in the middle of January. Um, that's actually me standing looking a bit uh, mesmerized by the array of food there. Um, <laughs> that was a, a lovely, lovely time. Um, what was that? That was for a, a holiday, right? I cannot remember uh, which. Dr. Martin Luther King. That's right, yeah, yeah, for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, but that was a wonderful opportunity and it was really, really great to connect with you all there. Um, and I thought this picture was cute. And so since then, we've been very, very busy. We have, we've had a lot of political education um, happening on campus and just in Seattle. Uh, in, in January, we did a, a teach-in on uh, U.S. military strategy and current U.S. military strategy, um, particularly focusing on, like, what the three fronts the war the U.S. considers, that being Eastern Europe and the Middle East and... Uh, Asia, the Pacific, um, and so really like pushing that forward and helping with that understanding in order to like understand how all of these causes are connected. Um, and we've been, we've supported on these various other things. There's uh, Bayan and Kai Begun, uh, Sammy Dune, Super, uh, generally just a lot of great stuff and a lot of learning. Um, we had no to DSS, which is the Defense Supplier Summit that Boeing put on in I believe March. Um, it was actually it was a campaign that we worked on pretty extensively and was a lot of a culmination of planning experience and working with a lot of different people. And we actually got the uh, this convention, the summit, to shut down to go online on the day that we went to go protest, which was uh, amazing. Um, and of course, we still showed up anyway to keep putting the pressure on it and keep us visual. Um, we had this awesome like plane prof that people took apart. Um, amazing speakers, amazing posters and banners that people made. Um, and so, yeah, absolutely, like a, a really amazing culmination of all of that effort. Um, we also had, uh, we had an action there where uh, this colonel of the military um, did some talk at the University of Washington, and so folks went to go and disrupt that and to go and talk um, and ask questions and basically prevent this like uh, war figure from continuing to push this uh, like military agenda on campus. I actually, I have a video from that um, with a couple of the students who asked questions. I hope that the video works. I'm, if it needs to be larger, I can see if I can do that, but hopefully, hopefully it's, it's uh, adequate. strong, as a Filipino American student, I and so many of my peers are concerned for the safety of our families and our people. Not for war and occupation. Not for war and occupation. Not for another 
question. CFAB's partner with the Armed Forces of the Philippines, which has committed countless human rights violations over the years, including extrajudicial killing and enforcement appearances to torture and harass activists, journalists, and indigenous communities. One of the most significant issues is the... Without having to acknowledge the legitimate experiences and concerns that we have around the militarization of campus and the tangible impact U.S. imperialism has on us, our families, and our country. I want you to fund peace and pro-people and pro-student programs, not the military occupation of our land. All for economic domination and control. Every day, Filipina and queer folk are put in danger by U.S. military bases on Philippine soil and the collaboration of the American military and armed forces of the Philippines. We don't want our institutions to prop up weapons transnational corporations like Boeing to invite military strategists and also to make students spill the bombs from the aircraft used in the war game. As long as if there's continued military Folks, presence, we're going to take a five minute break from America in our homeland, where people will never be truly we'll safe, and we will continue to fight back. Yeah, so that um, we we did we disrupted that uh, and obviously got a little bit of disdain from these uh, event organizers. But they're with the University of Washington War College, which is a somehow a thing that exists uh, that we've been obviously resisting um, and joining with other organizations to resist. So this was a really great collaboration, uh, mainly with Anak Bayan, which is a Filipino organization on campus. Um, but we've been really building these coalitions and these like united groups to to fight for what's right. Uh, in a similar vein, uh, I have a video as well. We did in uh, April when the cherry blossoms on campus were in bloom and there's tourists like by the millions probably on campus. We um, we held campus tours where we uh, went by and talked about the various and many numerous locations on campus where militarism um, and war profiteering really takes place. Um, so we visited various buildings that Boeing has either contributed to or operated out of various military buildings, military science. And um, I just have this video, which has a little preview. I also was one of the like leads on these tours. Uh, we had two of them and we did these last year and absolutely we'll try to do them next year. So keep an eye out for that when uh, spring rolls around again. We're here at Clark Hall right now, home of not one, not two, but three ROTC headquarters and the site which the U.S. military uses to leverage the exorbitant price of education to recruit more bodies for its military. That's kind of what we're here to talk about today, um, neoliberalism. My favorite fact about Henry M. Jackson is that he had a little nickname that was the senator from Boeing. They've also solicited a $10 billion donation from Boeing just for the naming rights to the second floor. It's going to be the Boeing Center for Artificial Intelligence. Um, and one notable device that they tested there was the B-29 bomber used to drop atomic weapons on Japan. This is where they test bombers and warplanes, but instead they're, they're advertising a camp good times. Imperialism in general is a huge system that we're up against. Even though it seems like it's a really big problem to fight, the fact that it is everywhere means that anywhere you are, you can fight back. Yeah, it was it was fantastic. The uh, at least the second um, tour that we held, there were at least two dozen people, and some of them some of them were uh, resist members or folks that we'd reached out beforehand. But there was a good handful that were just folks walking around campus who listened in or joined in, which is amazing um, and absolutely what what we hope to get out of it. Um, and then most recently, we had the students and workers over profit and war action. It was, it was confronting the Board of Regents at the University of Washington, which is the governor elected group that decides basically with no oversight or other authority, all of the finances and investments and decisions of the University of Washington. Um, and so this is another thing that we uh, sort of built up and organized for a while and it ended up uh, looking a lot different from how we initially planned because of various factors such as the uh, 
liberated zone it, on campus being set up and uh, people having to commit time to other things. But uh, the similarly to the to know to DSS, the Board of Regents meeting on the day that we had planned to go and to submit a public comment and to rally outside also was canceled. Um, but they had a meeting the next day and we showed up, of course, anyways. Um, and this was just in the past week. Um, and so it's, it's wonderful to see the uh, momentum sort of stay steady for the past five months. Um, and then, yeah, of course, the uh, liberated zone, it was, we've had it set up, I think now for two weeks, um, at least a week. Uh, and um, I know that some folks are asking about how to get involved or how to support. And there's a ton of opportunities for that. I think absolutely always needed is a uh, contribution of funds and uh, donations and contribution of food. There's fairly constant um, like updates on, I, I, you can either get connected through like resist or um, the United Front for Palestine, which resist is a part of on campus um, on what they need for in terms of food and supplies um, because it's uh, obviously feeding and taking care of all these people who are occupying the space to put pressure onto the administration. Um, and so we would absolutely, of course, love that support and even just coming by and visiting. Um, another, I think, I guess a specific um, ask right now is that tomorrow there is a, a counter protest, a pro-Israel rally uh, planned to come and to uh, face, face off um, or intimidate the liberated zone. And so there's a general ask for just community support and presence. And of course, this is um, this is a, a dangerous and um, like potentially escalatory, potentially violent uh, moment. But I think the greater support that we have um, and the greater community presence, uh, obviously, the the less chance that there would be any um, violence or escalation. Um, but the, the yeah, the main goal is just keeping us safe. Um, and so that's, uh, yeah, and things are constantly updating and changing. So definitely keep an eye. I know that um, obviously it shows up in the news and in newspapers plenty as well. Um, but yeah, and we have we have uh, negotiations currently ongoing with, uh, with high UW officials on divesting from Israel, divesting from Boeing. Um, that being a very large and high up demand, which is really great to see that demand held and carried by so many people on campus. Um, and of course it's not, it's, it's much easier said than done to uh, negotiate these kind of things with, with these campus officials, but it is, um, it is movement in the right direction. So uh, we're feeling hopeful about that. And then finally, um, the uh, cancel RIMPAC campaign. And so if you're not familiar, RIMPAC is the Rim of the Pacific Maritime Exercises that the US military and countless other militaries around the world put on in Hawaii. Um, and it involves just like ridiculous <laughs> displays of weaponry and of planes and boats and like fuel spills and exploding munitions and ridiculous pollution and just um, like rampant abuses of the land, of the sea, and of the people that are there. Um, and so, of course, of course, we're going to resist that. Of course, we're trying to get it canceled. Um, and so this is, yeah, this is a campaign that's being carried by the national chapter of Resist U.S.-led War, which, again, Grand, Ground Zero is part of. And I think that some of you were at the initial campaign launch meeting for this. Um, but I think right now there's a variety of different uh, ways to get involved and things to do. Of course, um, I, I believe Resist is organizing a contingent to go to this uh, mobilization. It's in San Diego, June 29th and 30th. Um, Ground Zero, of course, is also welcome and uh, encouraged to form a coalition if you feel compelled to go to that mobilization and show up. Um, but otherwise, the, there's plenty of ways to support in the lead up. Um, I know that fundraising is a part of it and just that sort of um, propping up the, the general call. Um, and then also it's uh, it's rapidly changing and evolving. So honestly, just keeping in touch. Uh, I know that Resist absolutely can 
send you guys more information and send anyone who's interested more information. Um, but generally, I think that the the um, idea for this is just uh, staying plugged in. Um, but it's very uh, agitating and very hopeful that the uh, that we can get some very positive momentum with this. So yeah, that's all. That's all I had. Uh, the so-called Zionist counter protesters are getting paid, you know, by Israel and ABAC and stuff. Have you heard much about this? I, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I don't have um, a lot of information on this specific um, counter protesters that are planning this rally on Sunday on, for tomorrow. Um, I believe that it is a like religious group, um, but it's probably going to attract a variety of just general agitators and counter protesters, but I'm not, I don't know very many specifics. Um, we just heard recently that the same group or type of group will be counter-protesting, it's being called uh, a prayer counter-protesting on Bainbridge, where we often come every Sunday to do rallies for um, that support of us and Palestine. So it kind of sounds like the same group. So it's just kind of interesting that it's like they all pick this Sunday to do it everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, absolutely. Other questions? I read in the Seattle Times that the president of UW said that she wanted a peaceful resolution to the encampment and hoped that the students would just pack up and leave by the end of the weekend. Have you had any information about the likelihood of that happening? Um, that is a good question. I mean, I think, and uh, I think that this is fairly apparent, but I think that the likelihood depends, of course, on what the yeah, other president of UW and what UW in general is willing to um, do in terms of the demands that we have put forward, because those have been very clearly um, drawn out and elaborated. And these uh, negotiations with uh, representatives from the encampment have been going on for the past week. Um, and I've, from what I know and what I've heard, I'm always, I'm not in those um, negotiation rooms, but. Uh, it's been a lot of pushback and a lot of half promises and very little commitment to um, making any meaningful progress forward. So the real, yeah, the the real uh, figures here who have that power to to get the encampment to pack up and leave is the uh, administrators who are so far refusing to make any really solid promises or take any really solid action towards um, divesting from Israel or from Boeing. So I'm a guess, I'm guessing it's going to stick around for a little while longer, but don't quote me on that. I'm really impressed by the logistics, like it's funny, like, oh, because I, I, I've been here a couple of times and there were like speakers and there was the night. Yeah, can you walk us through kind of all the different areas that are there for people that haven't been there? Like, because it is really impressive. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It is. It's incredibly impressive, even from like being able to see it operate on the inside a little bit. Yeah. We've got a, um, a medic station, obviously, uh, a really the logistics team absolutely deserves like all of the accolades in the world because they are managing food and water and supplies and all of these different meetings and events that are happening there and making sure everybody is safe and taken care of. Um, there's mall, there's a food tent, there's mutual aid, um, and there's, uh, there's a really cool, there's a tent that's a, um, library, 
Uh, it's full of books and zines that folks can check out. Um, I honestly, things things are constantly changing as well. So there's definitely probably things set up that I haven't seen just having been there yesterday. Um, there's a really, really cool arts and crafts uh, canopy tent area. Um, folks have made a ton of painted signs and banners there. Um, and then just uh, just a lot of people there and just a lot of uh, folks hanging out and folks uh, folks who care. It's really, it's really cool. I, I do absolutely recommend stopping by. There's uh, very friendly um, and welcoming. Of course, it's uh, the, the goal is for it to be a, a liberated zone. And it's, of course, very welcoming to any community members. Um, yeah, it's unbelievably impressive. And it's unbelievably impressive how many folks have come together and contributed and worked on it. Oh, uh, I uh, big respect from a bunch of people here to be involved. The person is on board, of course, that you, you, w, you, w, you, they're not going to have this tomorrow, or even if that was on the table for them. What type of agreement or promise or gesture would you, would the group accept or agree to in order to? Um, this in camp or decamp, I suppose. That is a great, yeah, that's a great question. It's definitely one that I can't answer alone, but I can, um, I can give you a good, a good few ideas in the direction. I do, uh, the, I think I'd want to emphasize that this is obviously a large collective group and a lot of people may even have disagreements about what would be a productive or acceptable like offer um, in order to decamp or uh, to pack up, and so that's absolutely something that's being talked about right now, even before any solid uh, offers have been made, um, and hopefully oh. will will be resolved. But we have, there's a very much an attitude of open conversation and uh, dialogue, and um, I'm not sure if there's. I don't think anyone has set out right now what we would like to see or what at what point we would um, consider it to be successful. But I think I would also want to emphasize that this isn't um, necessarily, this isn't, of course, not the last um, thing that we'll ever do. It's not the last protest that will ever take place. Um, and there's also no expectation that this will be the be all end all of uh, getting administration to listen to these demands and listen to the students' voices. Um, so it's obviously a balance between that and between that obvious understanding that this is such a um, sort of momentous moment uh, and there's so much uh, like velocity with this that we should really harness and utilize um, but also that we uh, do need to think with that sort of future in mind um, and understanding that there's this is a continuing battle this is not the last one sorry so just follow-up questions thank you for that this is very really thoughtful you all look really smart um, the the other follow up answer is that is there uh, this you know, it's probably too I mean, it might be getting too far afield, but if we stop war, of course, we probably would mostly treat climate change also, kind of. So, is there also that maybe wrapped up with this burning climate uh, disruption or whatnot? Yeah, I mean, we we work with um, with ICA in institutional climate action on uh, UW campus pretty extensively. They were really involved with the um, students and workers of our profit and war action, and very involved in the uh, encampment that we set up. Um, and they're awesome people. There's some of those some of them members I know fairly personally and are just fantastic. And it's obviously also just a concern many of us carry with us and recognizes. Uh, interlinked and connected um so uh, yeah i guess the answer is absolutely um they're definitely intrinsically tied but also that's something the environment um and protection of the environment is something that we want to uh dedicate attention to so um we were out there listening the other day i couldn't say very much but um i was wondering is us Resist you have led war. Did you start the encampment or did this happen by other students showing up and how did it all get started? 
Yeah, well, it was at the encampment was um, obviously it wasn't just one group or one person, but the the main sort of planning and logistics was done by the United Front for Palestine on the UW campus. And that is a coalition of multiple organizations which resist is included in. So much of the resist membership and leadership was involved, but it was not necessarily a, a, a thing, an action that was credited to a certain group or credited to a certain person. It was very much a large group planned and planned in advance. Um, Coalitions and everything. Like, how do you how do you all like resolve differences of opinions and everything? How's that sounds challenging. It sounds really challenging. <laughs> um, yeah, I won't. I won't say that it's not challenging, um, but I think uh, there's a variety of of tactics and strategies that we've tried, and many times that we've failed. Uh, I think it's just the continuous um, trust in each other and uh, an ability to just continuously speak and to continuously have dialogue and conversation um, and uh, that sort of just mutual understanding that we're all in this place for a reason and we're all taking up these spaces for a reason um, and grounding in our objectives definitely helps sort of stifle or dissuade some of those disagreements that get in the way of us working together as a whole. Well, how are the relationships going between the Jewish community? Jewish forces for peace and the Palestinian activist community. Oh, sure. Um, well, I mean, I, I can answer that fairly well. I am I am Jewish and I am uh, involved somewhat with Jewish Voices for Peace. I went yesterday actually to a really beautiful um, anti-Zionist Shabbat that was hosted at the uh, Liberated Zone. Um, and I don't, there's uh, no animosity. There's a very very much attitude of collaboration and of uh, solidarity between Jewish organizations and Palestinian organizations, Muslim organizations in the liberated zone and in general on campus. Um, I would say, I mean, I'm sure that there's isolated incidents or perhaps personal uh, like conflicts, but in general, that's, uh, and I would say in general across the country, um, that's far more the the idea of this conflict or of this like, misacceptance of uh, Jewish voices in these spaces or uh, the dominance of Jewish voices is just not happening at all, or it's not happening in any significant portion. Um, we are in very strong solidarity, and I haven't seen really anything to uh, contradict that. Sorry, I might have I might have missed some of that. Action, training and nonviolent action resistance. How do things in a nonviolent, respectful way and not just a disruptive way of it. Um, yeah. Now, are you against doing nonviolent resistance based on value principles and then Martin Luther King Jr. principles? Um, was the, the questions about nonviolence and nonviolent resistance? Yeah, nonviolent, nonviolent resistance. You know, for example, in the, in the Jefferson Smith Town Hall, uh, he was shouted down and hit her. He had a very strong negative reaction. He told the Palestinians left wing passage after that incident. So it seemed like somehow that incident was not well handled a couple weeks back. But the representative Smith Town Hall. Yeah, I mean I'm not uh, particularly familiar, but um yeah, that's difficult. So when the students um, negotiate with the university for uh, what 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 are the conditions under which they would um, close the encampment and leave and everything, who specifically with the university do they communicate? Who are the uh, officials that they talk with? Yeah, I actually have because um, one of the one of the members of Resist, Zoe, who you may or may not be familiar with, um, 
but absolutely a very inspiring um, figure to me at least is on that negotiation team um, for the encampment. I had the uh, yeah the the director of campus security, the dean of undergraduate academic affairs, the vice president of undergrad diversity, the vice president of student life, uh, the provost, and the, yeah the president I guess apparently are all on that in that negotiation. Um, maybe not all of them necessarily at every meeting, but um, it seems like we have fairly high up uh, administrators. So we go into the offices and meet with these uh, officials inside their buildings and their offices. Is that correct? Yeah, there's the, I think that it's, I mean, it's an officially like set up and uh, ongoing negotiation. I, I, again, I'm not familiar with the exact logistics of it, but the, um, yeah, the administration has met in a very formal atmosphere with these uh, students and organizers. Thank you. And following up on that question, has uh, the negotiating team of the university ever ever met with um, down at the encampment? Have they ever come down to the encampment to see what it was actually like? I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, I, yeah, I couldn't answer that. Not as far as I believe. Um, I don't, I definitely don't think that the president has been there because I think that I would have been aware of that. Um, I, I know that, idea. yeah, plenty of faculty have come. There's plenty of ally faculty and also just general right. faculty that have come by. Um, I believe that maybe the director of like campus security was um, nearby or at least has seen it. Um, but I don't think that there's been much engagement from the administration with the actual encampment itself. And I think that's a shame because I think they see how you're operating, what you're doing, and they know what your demands are, but if they could see how you're operating, maybe they might be a little more open to. Um, you know, truly negotiate. Anyway, thank you for all the work you're doing. I totally appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's a, we do, we focus so very much, of course, on that, on um, Boeing, and Boeing's got such a unique and uniquely uh, intertwined relationship with the University of Washington, um, and the, yeah, the campus tour that we did, we walked by the construction site for this building that Boeing contributed that 10%, that $10 million to uh, the various other buildings, the, like, advanced research center and the wind tunnels. Um, but uh, as, like, intimidating as that campus presence and that general, like, presence in the minds and in the classes of all of the students, it's, um, we still feel uh, obviously agitated and obviously um, confident that this is a, both a just and a realistic demand. Um, in fact, the uh, Portland State University, in which, which is the uh, university that we actually modeled some of the cut ties with Boeing campaign off of, uh, recently had a temporary uh, cutting of funding with Boeing from Boeing, uh, which is amazing, uh, absolutely incredible. And I'm from Portland. I've spent a lot of time in Portland. And I have a lot of friends there um, who are a part of that. And it's 
really motivating and it really um, gave a lot of us hope on both sides. Uh, so I feel like that's a fight that we obviously feel very motivated to continue. I heard that there's like a security, some, some people are doing security like from 12 to 4 a.m. and then some, uh, some others are from 4 to 8 a.m. Oh, how are you doing yeah. actually? Yeah, no, I mean, the folks are, I mean, uh, one thing is I think there's a benefit to, to us being college students who are used to maybe studying all night or um, doing other activities that aren't necessarily in a circadian rhythm. Um, but folks have been really amazing about stepping up and taking on these responsibilities and these just, I think it's easier when you're recognizing that it's in the interest of all of us and our collective safety and goals and community. Um, and the, uh, at least some of the security folks last night got to see the Aurora Borealis. So they had the, uh, long end of the stick, I guess. Oh. <laughs> so, that's Any other questions? Oh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, you were, yeah, we're really impressed. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening. Oh, thank you. Remember, you are all welcome tomorrow. We're going to be going to have to if anybody can make it out here, but I know you've got a lot going on. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for, and for coming to share this. Yeah, of course. Of course. Bye. Bye. Bye.